I don't know how many times I have been approached with a question from my students or from strangers, even um, chess players, or even I had discussions about the same topic with uh, uh, some professional players, fellow grandmasters, and no one seemed to have one exact answer and the reason why there is no one exact answer to the question how to learn calculation there is no theory about it like a theory of the opening how should you play opening what is the best move like there is a certain rules about uh, basics of chess you have to develop you have to coordinate your pieces, uh, you have to activate your pieces, you have to king your, uh, have, keep your king safe. We all know this, but no one has ever, ever developed exact theory uh, what, how to learn calculations. How to learn positions? Yes. How to learn openings? Yes. How to learn end games? Yes. No one no, uh, ha can give one concrete answer how to calculate. Well, I have my own theory about it, my own kind of advices. That's what I want to share. And I think this is one of the very, very important parts of the game, critical parts of the game. Uh, and the reason why there is no exact answer because it's, it varies from position to position and there is no one general rule that applies all positions. A lot of players, they, have, they make mistake in calculation stri strictly psychological. They are looking in positions Every position where they calculate, they are skeptical about, and they don't like the position they get after calculations. Some of them have exactly opposite approach. They everything they calculate, they see stars there. They they see they are winning everywhere. If they calculate the combination, small combination, they think that's it that works, and I'm going to go for it. They don't know that every co combination may have counter combination. And only way to determine if there is one or not is by calculating. Let me show you one small example. It's very well known position of uh, Tarash uh, defense, Tarash opening. Uh, this position, I'm sure most of the players have seen. Well, in this position, main move is bishop g5. I play bishop e3, but we don't discuss what moves are there. There is also b3 move played by uh, uh, Larsen against Kasparov. Now knight e4 and knight a4 or bishop even bishop b2 bishop f6 and white may go knight a4 now this is the position now player with black may calculate variation that gives him great position i think oh i go b5 Knight cannot take on c5 because knight takes c5 and the pawn is pinned because wise bishop will be hanging after dc bishop takes b2 and if knight takes c5 is not possible for white then they have to go knight c3 and I can even win a pawn or I can take on c3 
and go C4 or even I can go C4 right away. So this is good for me and they go. But you see, B5 is a small combination because knight takes C5 and knight takes C5, variation does not end here. Here, after playing rook C1 or queen C2, white has serious advantage. You see the two knights on the file are hanging, black loses uh, this minor piece back and white will have big advantage. So the problem in, the ca in some calculation, people suffering from syndrome called wishful thinking. They wish everything works and they, in other words, they don't calculate and think whether it's going to work or not. They have so-called opinion before the calculation. They said, it must work. Now let's see how it must work. I see this. Oh, it looks good. Let's go. But they, what you have to do, this is optimist point of view on uh, on the appro uh, optimist approach to the position. Pessimistic approach to the position, well, everything I do, any combination I would want to play, it's not going to work. Let's see why it doesn't work. They are both equally wrong approaches. You have to intensify search for yourself and intensify search for your opponent. Now, there is uh, one very famous American grandmaster. Actually, I have great respect and admiration for him. Walter Brown, who was six-time uh, United States champion. But he has, in my opinion, anyway, when I was preparing for him, he has one a little... Um, problem in his game. What he does, he calculates too much. And when he calculates too much, he has very, very optimistic uh, approach to his calculations. And let me show you what I mean by that. There's a game I played against Walter in New York International Tournament. And let me concentrate on the calculation part of this game. G3, C5, Bishop G2, G6. Knight F3, Bishop G7. Uh, we're going to go quickly through this part of the game. C3, Knight C6, D4, C takes D, C takes D. D5, Knight C3, E6. Castle, Knight E7. Uh, bishop f4, castling, queen d2, knight f5, e3, and here black plays very optimistic plan. Actually, it's nothing wrong with it. f6, trying to trap uh, white's bishop, h4 was played, h6, g4 was played, and now after knight d6, g5. Uh, here, black made very ambitious move. Black played knight d4. Calculation is such that if white takes, which actually was taken, pawn takes, and knight is hanging, if knight moves anywhere, which is not a good position, even moving here. Black goes e5, and because the queen is not protected on d2, black has very, very good game. But here, white calculated a little farther than that. So I played here g takes h. Of course, this move was not missed by uh, Walter Brown. But what was missed is he 
I am sure he anticipated to play bishop h8 in this position, and all the same threats remain. On knight h2, black is going to go e5, having great position. But what was missed that after g takes h, black cannot play bishop h2, which is, in fact, very... Uh, uh, very logical move because on bishop h8 white does not have to move the knight on f3 but can play queen c2 which completely changes evaluation of the position and black is nearly lost next move knight is going to d2 e4 becomes w terrible weakness and there is no e5 move this move nearly wins the game because taking knight will lead to a mate. This is the simple calculation. In, in the calculation, there is a simple move that was missed by the black. And now position completely changes. So what happened here after g takes h, um, what was played, black simply took the uh, knight and white played in this position h takes g king takes g7 bishop takes f3 and still black played e5 uh, and white went bishop g3 after e takes d rook f to d1 knight e5 was played bishop g2 and bishop g4 again looks very good for black but ed was played and uh, my opponent is good enough player to realize that after bishop takes rook takes uh, this part actually has nothing to do with calculation it's simply evaluation of position pair of white bishops are very powerful and after knight has to move somewhere d5 and d6 will move supporting by two bishops will make black's position very very dangerous so what was played instead knight f3 check bishop takes f3 bishop takes f3 and in this position rook d to c1 you see why it has problems with the king but so is black so what happened here quickly we want to go to this part of the game rook f7 queen d3 bishop d5 h5 now we opening black's posi king's position too g takes h king h2 and after queen e8 rook e1 rook e1 was played to prevent black from coming queen e4 rook e1 and after rook e7 rook g1 now black's position quickly becomes very very bad bishop e4 bishop d6 check and on king h7 queen g3 and rook d7 now what i thought this is the type of position uh it's white has certain attacking position but how do you play this position this should be calculated <laughs> you see the critical squares are g6 square g7 square so that's what black, white should be uh, concentrated on taking advantage of so after rook d7 rook a to e1 Queen e6, now black wants to bring the rook into the game somewhere on e8 or g8. And here it's strictly calculation. There is no general principle of the next in the next move that white made, but it's a very powerful move. It's strictly calculation. I already told you g6, g7 square, and maybe g8 square. Those three squares are critical so bishop b8 totally disconnects 
white's black's rook on a8 and makes their position uh, hopeless after bishop b8 queen e8 was played rook takes e4 of course rook ta queen takes e4 uh, is not possible because it's a quick mate queen h8 mate followed by queen takes f6 whichever piece black interposes on h7 uh, so what happened on rook takes e4 queen takes b8 pinning black's queen white's queen and after rook e5 um, game is over because as i said g6 g7 and g8 squares are targets g7 and g8 are protected but g6 is not and also white is threatening rook takes h5 so here black is getting mated f e was played queen g6 check and after king h8 queen h6 check followed by mate that was now what can we say about this game when you have a wishful thinking then you you reach the position you reach the position that looks like very good for you and you accomplish what you want then you know that once you cornering your opponent if you like some position if position is very good for you that obviously it's not very good for your opponent and you know your opponent will intensify the search how to get out of it so his calculation will be more intensive than yours you may have wishful thinking and your opponent will have survival instinct and survival instinct is a lot more realistic than wishful thinking and that's why you should calculate from both sides and that's the only way to find a right solution